Hey all here OS Reviews. So recently we're checking out some more connected smart home products and today we're taking a look at the KuGeek BP2 which is a blood pressure monitor that has both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to connect onto a smartphone companion app, either iOS or Android, and then you're able to monitor those health stats from there. So uh, the concept of having everyday products, whether it's a blood pressure monitor, whether it's a water bottle, and then adding a connectivity option to link it to an app on a phone is becoming more and more common as technology uh, matures, and this is another example. And on the inside we have just the instruction manual, the quick start guide. Then we've also got the unit itself, which is sitting underneath, and that's it. Uh, the blood pressure monitor itself recharges simply using micro USB, it takes about two hours to completely recharge. Afterwards you can use it for about a month. And in terms of dimensions, it reminds me a lot of something like a power bank, maybe 10,000 milliamp hours. If I put it next to something like a typical smartphone, this one has a six inch display, you get a better idea of the overall size. So again, very compact, a lot smaller than the typical blood pressure monitor. Easier to just put into a backpack for uh, when you're just going on the road. In terms of the build, again, it is made entirely out of aluminum, so it kind of looks like an Apple product or a power bank. There is a small LCD dis display, which is backlit as well, so you can read back some vitals, even if you don't want to connect to your phone for more information. Uh, that just stores your historical data, so it tracks your changes over time. There's also a dedicated power key, a LED light switch for charging, and there's a slight curve as well to the uh, metal to accommodate the armband, which again inflates to access your blood pressure. Now one thing I want to point out is many fitness trackers these days claim to have blood pressure monitoring as one of the features, but uh, the majority, 99% of them, are using an algorithm to estimate that. It's basically using your heart rate and then using a conversion table, it's able to calculate, okay, so most people with this heart rate have this blood pressure. It's not going to be medically you know, as accurate. So if you are really conscious about your health, uh, maybe if you are, you know, have high blood pressure, then something like this is definitely going to give you a lot more accuracy than those other uh, wearables. So tapping on the switch once brings it to life and it, by default it's uh, trying to connect using Bluetooth to our phone first. Its app, which is called Smart Health, can be found on the Play Store, and from here it's interesting because it's actually made from TomTop, which is another kind of online seller similar to Gearbest, so this seems to be their own line of products, uh, which is interesting because I found this one on Amazon. All right, so the app here is pretty simple. You do need to sign up with an email for the first time uh, just to encrypt your data uh, and protect, again, the statistics that you have stored on your account. From here, you can see a number of their devices that you can tap on to connect to, a few advertisements such as for their smart scale. I can tap on the plus key here to add a new device. So right now we want to connect it to the uh, BP2, which is, again, the blood pressure monitor. Once connection is done, you're able to start the measurement. So just turn on the device and you can select the number of times you want to measure your heart rate and you can tap on start from your phone or tablet and it will automatically begin over on the device. You also get a cardiograph that shows kind of your heart rate information in real time. Uh, I can also stop it on the tablet over here. Now, the biggest uh, downside I found in my testing is that it times out very quickly, maybe by default to save on battery, but after about 10 seconds of inactivity, the heart rate monitor just goes to sleep. And sometimes in 10 seconds, you're unable to connect to your device using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And if that fails, you have to tap on the power key multiple times, like now, it just goes to sleep, uh, to try and reconnect it. So there really isn't an option to go into settings to change the duration it takes for it to time out, which is, uh, again, the only software downside. And out in the main menu, you're able to see uh, your information. I can tap on this, for instance, to take a look at that data on a graph compared to the changes over time. So again, that's the benefit of having this app is you no longer have to write it down or record it into your own memory. Uh, you're able to just look at it on a graph. I can also tap on this icon to create a new user. So if you want to have someone else measure their blood pressure and not have that impact your profile, you're able to set one up very quickly to toggle back and forth between multiple people. And if you screenshots, here was a screenshot of the heart rate uh, being read continuously during one of the measurements. And over here we have an image of what it looks like once it's done with a particular measurement. Uh, it's recommended that you only do one measurement per day, otherwise the results could be uh, not as uh, accurate or effective. So that's something to keep in mind. But afterwards it tells you kind of your status, whether it's healthy or not, if you're in this green region, if, it, if it's in the red region, it's in critical condition. So that's pretty much it as far as our hands-on review of the KuGeek BT2, the smart blood pressure monitor. Overall, I think it performs quite well, and for a sub-40 bucks, it could be worthwhile if 
if you are always on the go and you need something really compact to take with you, or if you want a way to, again, record your data onto a convenient app which you can track over time and see the changes, as opposed to, again, using a pen and paper method if you have an older, regular blood pressure monitor. Uh, only downsides, I would say, would probably be the fact that, uh, again, the connection process can be a little bit confusing at first because uh, when you are first setting it up, again, the fact that the screen times out after 10 seconds, uh, especially when you're first pairing it to this device, you may have to try and tap on it a few times to get to work. It's not quite as seamless just because, again, the battery saving is a little too aggressive. So it tries to, again, go to sleep whenever you aren't using it. And sometimes it doesn't give it enough time to actually connect. But uh, otherwise, performance of the actual measurement, design are all pretty good. Check out more details in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.